we're just going to swap anchors because we've noticed that on our main anchor chain that we're really losing some diameter on uh, the first third of the chain. Well, that's the full diameter here, and then like that's what it's down to. So actually, yeah, it is pretty bad. That's definitely, uh, that's probably like half the diameter. We have the same mantis swivel on both anchors, so I just took it off the shackle. And we'll just swap which ones are on which. So I just cut off the bad part of the chain. That's gonna be this part we're gonna get rid of. We'll dispose of it on shore somewhere. This is something I've been real curious about. So we put this mantis swivel on about a year ago. Yeah, just exactly one year ago. And this is this one is normally on our main anchor. I just switched them to swap out this chain, do this chain thing. But this is the one that's normally on our main anchor, which is in the water like almost every single day unless we're at a marina which is kind of rare so let's say maybe at least 300 days out of the year this swivel and chain combination has been in the water um and when i installed the mantis swivel it's a stainless steel swivel super heavy duty on galvanized chain there was a lot of criticism of the stainless steel contacting the gal uh, galvanized chain and they were saying that you know it's gonna one of them is cor gonna corrode easily because of the dissimilar metals and i know that's true especially when you have two metals far apart on the galvanic scale like aluminum and stainless steel that's gonna corrode the weaker the less noble metal super quick so in that case aluminum but in this case i don't i don't know how far they are apart on the galvanic scale oh another example our chain plates we redid our titanium and we have stainless steel um bolts through this chain plate so two separate metals but they're both very close and very high up on the galvanic scale so if something does corrode it's going to be the stainless steel bolts on that in that scenario but they're so close that there's not a lot of dis dissimilarities between the two metal so that corrosion is not going to be accelerated too much by the titanium um, in this case i think it's similar i don't think the galvanized steel and the stainless steel are too far apart on the galvanic scale but we're gonna see how much corrosion there is touching the stainless steel swivel versus the rest of the chain links nearby so that's what we're gonna check out now just taking apart our wire seizing that's just just making sure that um, everything stays secure and nothing comes unthreaded underwater. So, there it is, that's the pin that holds the chain pretty much no loss in width there um, and then here's the chain here is the last link that was touching that stainless steel and then here's some more so definitely just a little bit of loss of diameter in that chain um, but compared to the other links like there's there's a link it's a link apart right say so check out the 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 difference between those two so this this right here is the part that was touching the stainless steel and which is interesting because this the other end of that link looks like it has more corrosion more loss of diameter than the part that was on the stainless steel swivel um, and then it really doesn't look any more significant than the next second link up or let's look at another link that's a bit more up a little bit more diameter loss than this link that's a few up but to be perfectly honest the limiting factor of this chain wasn't even those links that are constantly underwater it was the other links that are kind of always towards the top surface of the water, maybe coming in and out of the water or things like that, maybe 50, 60, 70 feet up. And that you can see like, for example. So here's the worst of our chain here. This is probably at a, right around the 
50, 60 foot mark. And you could see quite a bit um, loss of diameter. And then that compared to the link that was touching the stainless steel swivel, just no comparison, it's night and day. And that is the limiting factor of this chain. It's th these links up here. So in my mind, um, the gal galvanized chain touch touching the stainless steel swivel is no factor. Like you're, this other part of the chain is more of a limiting factor than that. Pretty interesting. Look at this one. This one's terrible. Look at that link. And then look, this is the side that was touching the stainless steel. Crazy, huh? So anyway, there you guys go. So if you guys want to see the video where I installed this Mantis stainless steel swi swivel about a year ago, uh, I'll link it in the description. Um, and that's where I got a ton of criticism about the stainless steel touching the galvanized. Uh, but in my mind, it's not not an issue. I don't. I'm no expert at all. This is just a. Uh, our personal experience and this is for one year on this uh, swivel and chain the chain was about a year old when I put the mantis swivel on it so I don't know if that's a factor uh, maybe it is maybe it's not and uh, yeah I'm no chemist or anything either so let me know what you guys think in the comments below and yeah check out Tula's Tech Talk so let's check out the rest of this condition of the mantis swivel after one year of pretty much constantly being in the water. So the swivel still turns perfectly fine. Um, this is the, what's it called, uh, Teflon tape that they tell you to put on it. You guys saw when I took off the stainless um, wire seizing, that was all in good condition. And that's sacrificial anyway, that stuff. About probably every year you should replace that anyway. If anyone on Tula Tech Talk comments on my dirty hands, you don't belong here. <laughs> so pretty much just looking for any loss in like original uh, uh, material and I guess uh, checking on the threads, looking for rust, especially looking for cracks. Well, let's look at the inside of this sucker for now. There's like these big thick threads that are in here. I mean, there's still Fine. I still see original like machining marks in here and stuff like that. The outside looks fine. Everything looks fine in here. Some just some slight rust here and there, but no loss of material from that rust or anything. All right. Now this sucker, we gotta just take this. Oh yeah, here's the pin that the chain actually rests on. Um, just some slight rust, some surface rust on it. I don't see any cracks or anything. And I do feel like just a very slight loss of material. I just feel a little indent right there, like mainly where the chain is connected to. And then not really anything on the other side. Teflon tape, they said, I think you're supposed to use it on this pin as well. Just because it's stainless steel. Um, yeah, just dirty. I don't even really see any rust on it. Threads are still fine, no cracks. Looks perfectly fine to me. Now let's take apart this sucker. Well, let's look at the let's look at the shackle here real quick. This was a pain to get on, I think I remember. So why don't you just leave it? Yeah, I think I'm just gonna leave it. All right, we'll just look at it here. I don't see any cracks. Just some scratches. 
some surface rust down on this part. Yeah, still see all the original uh, markings and stuff like that. Half inch stainless steel 316. All right, let's take apart this swivel. Some surface rust on the inside. I don't see any cracking. No real loss of material anywhere in here. That's the main swivel section. Looks cleaner on the surface that actually swivels up against the other surface. And just a little dirt and stuff on this side. No cracks or anything where the pin goes through that holds the chain. A little slight loss of material here, just like in one of the corners here. Just maybe from rubbing back and forth on, on the chain or something like that. A little bit there and there, but I don't know, nothing to worry about. That's really it on that piece. This piece, I see some surface rust. Um, like just little spots though, here and there. Oh, this must be where that, uh, yeah, this is where that contact must have been made here. Wait, no, this goes here, and this goes here. Never mind. Anyway, yeah, just a little bit of worn down section right here, probably just from this part, the shackle right there. Just a little dimple or dip in the material. Uh, same thing right here, just a little tiny dimple right there on the outside. Yeah, nothing else too significant. see any uh, any markings on this side no dimples or anything there well no cracks whatsoever interesting so there you go I mean I hope that solves some curiosity of what a stainless steel mantis anchor swivel look like after being constantly used for a year I just switched this uh, swivel from our main anchor to our spare anchor because we had to uh, switch out the chain on those two anchors, but this is the one that's been in the water for a full year and pretty interesting. Nothing really, nothing to concern me whatsoever. I'm just going to put some more Teflon tape and, uh, and screw everything back together and um, yeah, use it for another year at least. Hope that helps solve some of your guys' curiosity, and uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe below, and we'll see you next time.